Coptic Handbook. This unique tome dates back to the 7th, 8th centuries AD and was obtained from Upper Egypt. The strange-looking 20-page parchment containing the text of spells for all occasions was unequivocally called by researchers the reference book of ritual power. It is generally accepted that this document was compiled by representatives of some ancient proto-Christian community or sect. The book itself can be safely called a manual on ancient spells and rituals. At the beginning of the book, there is a rather lengthy series of intricate prayer texts and then pictures, spells and words of power follow. However, this document will not be able to instill fear and awe in a simple man, especially since Coptic rituals and ceremonies were not distinguished by sophistication and were more domestic. For example, the reader was offered instructions for curing leptospirosis, then this disease was quite common. You just had to read a prayer over two nails and then drive the nail so spoken into the door frame. Since 1981, this tome has been kept in one of the Australian museums. Previously, it was owned by the famous collector Michael Fakelman, but no one knows anything about the previous history of the artifact. What happened in Alaska 350 years ago? The site of the battle, which took place almost four centuries ago, was found by Scottish archaeologists in Alaska. The find, according to scientists, fully confirmed one of the legends of the Yupik people, a group of Eskimo tribes that live in the west and southwest of Alaska, as well as the Russian Far East. The Yupik people include three tribes. The Aleutics, who lived in the coastal zone of central Alaska on the peninsula itself. The Yupiks live in central Alaska and the Utes live in the Russian Far East. But back to the legend. According to legend, a world war on a local scale took place during the so-called period of bow and arrow wars. The beginning of the fighting was an incident during throwing of darts, a Yupik folk pastime. The consequences of the accident were very tragic. One of the boys accidentally hit the other in the eye with a dart. The father of the victim solved the problem more than radically. He simply knocked out both eyes of the offender. Or blinded him with darts. The legend is silent about this. Further, in accordance with the traditions characteristic of any nationality, a petty skirmish between two parents gradually involved all relatives on both sides in the conflict, which in the end resulted in a full-scale war. True, a number of scientists believe that the gouged eye was just an excuse because due to difficult climatic conditions, all Yupiks suffered from food shortages. The entire male contingent of the village of Agalaimiet, led by a certain and Gurmiet, without warning, attacked another village, which was called practically the same, Kanamiet. Here it should be noted that the priest immediately warned Pengermit that the idea was doomed to failure and it was better not to start a war. However, the leader, who believed in his luck, did not believe the advice of the wise shaman and went with his army on a campaign against the neighbors. But the attack without a declaring war did not work. The villagers were not only warned but well prepared for the meeting. In the course of heavy defensive battles, the defenders counterattacked the enemy, dispersing him across the endless expanses of snow. Medical Pouch Dated to the era from 905 to 1170 AD, a bundle of psychoactive substances of plant origin was discovered in Cueva del Chileno in southwestern Bolivia. Possibly owned by a shaman of the era, the well-preserved bag contained the earliest evidence of the use of ayahuasca, a hallucinogenic tea. This is the first evidence that ancient South Americans could combine different medicinal plants to produce a powerful substance ayahuasca. Ayahuasca is a psychedelic brew created by the indigenous people of the Amazon basin. However, the plants used to create this powerful tea are not native to the area where the bundle was found, as the altitude is too high for them to grow. This suggests that the owner of the bundle either knew where these plants could be harvested or had access to a 
sizable trading network. According to archaeologists, the plants contained in the pouch could be poisonous if consumed in the wrong proportions, requiring the user to be knowledgeable about their use. The results of the study support the idea that humans have been using these powerful herbs for at least 1,000 years, combining them to go on a psychedelic journey, and that ayahuasca use may have roots in antiquity. Other items found in the leather bundle included wooden tablets for grinding various herbs, an ornate wooden tube for inhaling the hallucinogenic concoction, spatulas made from llama bone, and a pouch made from the faces of three foxes. Why Unplundered Barrow Surprised Archaeologists the barrow, two and a half meters high and 50 meters in diameter, as it turned out, concealed a stone crypt with a supporting wall around the perimeter. The crypt itself was made of flat slabs and widened slightly towards the top. It was covered from above with wood, on which stone slabs were laid. The entrance to the crypt was on the south side and a long corridor led to it, through which the dead were placed inside and the entrance was blocked with stones. Archaeologists are very lucky. The mount turned out to be unloaded and its contents will provide a huge amount of valuable information. It is already known that it dates back to the 4th century BC. The remains of six people were found inside the crypt. They were buried at different times, which means that this is a family crypt. Judging by the rich grave goods, these people belong to the upper class and apparently were the leaders of the tribes. The clothes of the buried were richly embroidered with gold plagues, and the costume of one of them may be reconstructed. The fact is that during subsequent burials, the bones of the previous one shifted and thus only the last buried person had all the details of the costume in their places. In total, more than a hundred gold objects were found. If you see me, cry. In Europe, they discovered a find that scared not only archaeologists. This news spread all over the world and even ordinary people were shocked. The water level in European rivers reached an all-time low level due to drought, as a result of which hungry stones appeared from under the water in the Czech Republic, the Netherlands, Germany, which served as markers of a critical drop in water, which foreshadowed famine. On one of them, installed along the Elbe, it is written, if you see me, cry. The landscape of Europe this summer resembles a desert. The unprecedented drought has taken countries from the Mediterranean to Scandinavia by surprise. These stones appeared during a period of drought and crop failure, when the water level in the rivers drops to a critically low level. Stones are sunk all over Europe, but most of these medieval marks of hunger are found in Germany, the Netherlands and Switzerland. Even the powerful Rhine became so shallow that the transportation of oil, iron, coal, and other goods fell sharply. The lower the water level, the less cargo barges can carry. According to Dutch hydrologists, there has never been so little water in the Rhine for all the time of observing the water level. As you can see, the discovery of medieval finds is not always a good sign. Sometimes it is better not to see some finds, as they are harbinger of trouble. And these are not just omens. New tax on the Dead Sea Scrolls the Dead Sea Scrolls, discovered near Jerusalem in the 1940s and 50s, are among the earliest existing texts of the Hebrew Bible. While trying to date some of these scrolls, researchers found letters on fragments that were thought to be empty. Later, using multispectral imaging, lines of text invisible to the naked eye were discovered. In the past, supposedly new fragments of the scrolls were made public, but then they turned out to be a fake. The fragments currently being studied were part of the original collection of scrolls found at Qumran and are believed to be authentic. Dennis Mitzi, senior lecturer in Hebrew and ancient Judaism at the University of Malta, said the newly discovered lines could be linked to the book of Ezekiel, but it's too early to be sure. Flood in ancient Teotihuacan during the excavations of Teotihuacan, a very strange detail was revealed. Houses and temples were covered with earth. 
Moreover, the nature of this filling did not correspond to the simple accumulation of soil over time. In this regard, even the version appeared that once the inhabitants of the city left it, before that, they carefully covered it with earth, perhaps so that their houses would not go to some conquerors. For some reason, the authors of this version were not embarrassed by the strangeness of such a decision, which has no analogues in history at all. Well, burn it, destroy it, you can do many things to spite the enemy, but to bury entire houses? Someone even calculated it took more soil to backfill than it took to create the Pyramid of the Sun. Another calculated that it took about 30 years of labor and 20,000 people to create the Pyramid of Sun. There are no such full-flowing rivers in the vicinity that they could, during the strongest flood, not only flood the city, but eventually cover it with their sediment entirely. There are no high mountains nearby from which a mud flow of sufficient power could descend. A simple tsunami could not do this either. There are only 400 kilometers to the sea in a straight line, and the height is about 2 kilometers. Archaeologists during the expedition discovered direct and obvious traces of the flood tsunami, which came from the Pacific Ocean and had a power that was quite sufficient to leave its mark in Mexican Teotihuacan. A new species of human a 146,000-year-old, or possibly older, skull dubbed Dragon Man, found at a construction site in the Harbin region of northeast China, may represent a new species of human. The scientists who published their findings in three separate papers in the Innovation in June 2021 said their analysis of the skull suggests it represents a new lineage of Homo sapiens called Homo longi. The term Dragon Man refers to the Dragon River in the area where the skull was found in 1933. The worker who discovered it hid it until 2018 when he told his family about the skull and they donated it to the Hebei Jiu University Museum. The well-preserved the fossil from the Middle Pleistocene is massive, with a large skull falling within the range of modern humans combined with a mosaic of primitive and derived features, the scientists said. According to them, unlike other Homo species, the skull has a broad low face, nearly square eye sockets, flat cheekbones, and a shallow palate with large molars. Paleoanthropologist Shi Jin Ni believes that Homo longi may be even more closely related to humans than Neanderthals. Arata Sumerian Atlantis when people talk about Atlantis, ancient Greece comes to mind. There, the Greeks indulged in philosophy, thought about the ideal state. One of them was Plato, and he described the myth of a distant country where people lived happily, using the grace of the gods for their own benefit. But as for the Sumerians, they also had a myth about a distant country where people lived richly. And no, this is not Dilmun, which is the modern island of Bahrain. A more mysterious country is described here, and perhaps this is where the Sumerian language comes from. The myth is little known, unlike the myth of Gilgamesh. Nevertheless, some mythological information is enough to reconstruct the overall picture. Arata is mostly mentioned in passing in Sumerian texts. Arata is described as a place to the east of Elam where the army goes on foot. It is indirectly mentioned that a flotilla can also get there, but it is not used. The country itself is described as mountainous. The inhabitants there are well acquainted with metallurgy and mining. Moreover, they worshipped the same gods as the Sumerians, spoke the same language. A number of researchers placed Arata in Transcaucasia and identified it with Urartu. But the Urartians called their country Biaini, and the name Urartu was invented by the Assyrians. The Sumerians accurately point to a location to the east of their country. Here, most likely, is Iran and mountainous. Then the question arises, with whom is the culture of Arata connected? Because not a single monument of this country has yet been found. Let it seem unscientific, but it is worth identifying Arata with the Bactria Margiana archaeological complex. See how similar many artifacts are to Sumerian ones. Woolen cloth in the Sumerian style, very large eyes, as on statues in Iraq. Silver Scroll of Jerash This relic was discovered inside an ancient amulet about 13 centuries old. 
The scroll contains the text of some magic spell. In any case, the best minds from the world of science agree that this inscription belongs to the hand of a Jewish sorcerer who lived in a town called Jerash, now near Jordan. Surprising is the fact that the plates of the silver scroll had a thickness of no more than 0.1 millimeters, so the text had to be extracted from the scroll using advanced 3D modeling technologies. Scientists believe that the text in a language incomprehensible to science, akin to what was found on the scroll of Jerash, was used in those ancient times as a way to overcome life's difficulties, fight ailments, and as protection from evil spirits. Researchers have also put forward the possibility that magicians, like the author of this scroll, could have come up with their own language, because the different lines of the spell are very similar to imitation of Greek and Arabic. No matter how incredible it may sound, the the scroll itself was first found only in 2014 at the site of a house destroyed by an earthquake. However, scientists dated the earthquake itself as far back as 749 AD. At the same place, archaeologists found a lot of glass bottles, jewelry, coins and other items, among which was a small 5cm metal cylinder which hid one of the biggest mysteries of modern archaeology. Traces of an Ancient Cruel Slaughter In the Spanish Pyrenees, in the picturesque highlands of the Husca region, scientists descended into a cave and found traces of an ancient massacre. Elstrog's cave is located here. There were 13 skeletons in the cave. All of them were killed in different years. Most of all, nine people died 7,300 years ago. Four children aged 3 to 7 years and five adults. These skeletons are 1,000 years older. Even inside, they found parts of ceramic products, stone tools. The bloody drama of the past blooms. Nine people, as scientists found out, after examining the remains, were killed very cruelly. They were tortured and beaten to death. They were shot from a bow and beaten with blunt objects. Genetic analysis showed that those killed could be representatives of the first wave of Neolithic migrants. It is believed that about 10,000 years ago, settlers from the Middle East spread throughout Europe. Archaeologists believe that these people fell in the struggle for the redistribution of territory. It was important for the invaders not only to occupy fertile land, the cave where the victims were found is located on a plateau, but also to demonstrate their power. The degree of violence that was used in the Pyrenees 7,300 years ago testifies to the extremely high aggression on the part of the attackers. It was once a widely held idea that hunter-gatherers millennia ago were naturally kind and peaceful. Meanwhile, scientists say studying the evolutionary relationships among different species on Earth suggests that aggression is probably deeply rooted in human nature. Ancient Roman Boxing Gloves Leather gloves were discovered in the summer of 2017 on the territory of the ancient Roman fort of Vindolanda, located south of Hadrian's Wall, a defensive fortification built around 122-128 AD. Accordingly, the gloves should be about 2,000 years old. Together with gloves, scientists found swords, shoes, and bath towels. Archaeologists say that this is supposedly the only surviving example of gloves. Archaeologists believe that they were used not for fighting, but for sparring. The gloves were well preserved, as they had lain all this time under the concrete floor and were not exposed to oxygen. The Most Colorful Tomb of Ancient Egypt in Egypt, many tombs have been found, but never so bright, with such well-preserved colors. The more surprising is the fact that it is as much as 4,400 years old. The tomb belongs to a certain official from the time of the construction of the pyramids, named Kuvi. The writings on the walls call him the pharaoh's only friend, the warden of the great house, one of the ten greatest in Upper Egypt. In other words, he was an extremely noble man. But the most majestic thing in the tomb is not the dignitary, but the paintings that accompany him on his last journey. They depict sailing ships, peasants working in the fields, and incredibly intricate designs. How exactly the Egyptians managed to keep colors vibrant for almost 5,000 years is still a mystery. The book was returned to the English Library.
The building could be repaired with a penalty for all the deadlines. But of course, no one will find the violator, and the book, published at the beginning of the 17th century, has now become the real diamond in the collection of books. The book now belongs to the Cathedral of Saints Peter and Paul in the English city of Sheffield. The temple was built in the 1280s and has long been a popular library among the locals. The library has not long been gone, and the clergy now do not even know where it could be. The publication that was handed over to the temple is called Faith and Practice of the Church of England. Judging by the notes, it was issued back in 1708, but the reader turned out to be so unscrupulous that he never gave it up until the end of his life. As a result, the work spent centuries on the shelf in families of several generations until three centuries later it was decided to return it. The return was made by a resident of Wales. The book had been with her godmother for many years and it was a dying wish to return it to the library. Skull with traces of complex brain surgery the remains of four women and six men were discovered at the archaeological site of Paleo Castro. Examination of the bones showed that these people led a physically difficult lifestyle and received many injuries. Judging by the nature of the burials, they all belonged to the upper class. The analysis revealed very serious cases of injuries received by both men and women. These injuries were treated surgically and orthopedically by a very experienced doctor, a surgeon with great experience. We believe that it was a military doctor. The skull of one of the buried people attracted particular attention of the researchers. A detailed analysis showed that the surgeon performed a complex brain surgery. The nature of the intervention indicates the severity of the injury. There was practically no chance of survival for this person. However, the doctor attempted to save him. He was probably a very important person for the population of Paleo Castro. Archaeologists have been able to obtain accurate medical, surgical, and paleopathological data about this unusual surgery and the tremendous efforts of the surgeon. He was determined that infection was the likely reason for the surgery. It was also determined that the man died during or shortly after the surgery. Foreign Human Skulls there are many claims of skulls with horns, however, very few of them have been independently investigated. Although specific skin tumors may look like horns, they are not part of the skeleton and are more like nails than horns. According to stories, horned skulls appeared in Pennsylvania and then mysteriously disappeared before they could be examined by experts. Giant Emerald Vessel the real treasures include not only the jewelry of kings and noble ladies, among them there are things of incredible beauty that cannot be worn or used in everyday life by a modern person. These items include an emerald vessel that once belonged to Emperor Ferdinand II. The emerald vessel is a fairly large, irregular-shaped container with a miniature domed lid. For decoration, gold animal with small inclusions of processed green stone was used. The metallic pattern wraps up the vessel and gives it an even more solemn, rich appearance. An emerald with a size of 2,680 carats was needed to make this work of art. The giant was found in the Musa mines located in Colombia. Unfortunately, we cannot trace this moment. It remains it only to assume that the emerald of unprecedented size was bought by Rudolf II himself. The stone is mentioned in the inventory of the imperial collection for 1616. Found a trace of the legendary meteorite Scientists have found a giant crater in Southeast Asia, which is 18 kilometers long and 13 kilometers wide. It is located in a volcanic field in the southeastern part of Laos. About 800,000 years ago, a real stone monster 1.9 kilometers wide collided with the Earth. Fragments from the impact scattered over 10% of the planet's surface. Scientists have found these fragments in the form of glass beads, known as tactites. Many times 
sometimes in Asia, Australia, and even in Antarctica. But until now, researchers have not been able to find the place where the meteorite hit. The search continued for over a century. Scientists have proven that a giant crater is buried underground, which is why the crash site was so difficult to find. When a meteorite hits the Earth, it melts the stones, scattering their splashes for thousands of kilometers. Cooling down these drops, harden and turn into what scientists call tactites. By examining the location of tactites, scientists can roughly determine the impact site of the meteorite that created them. America was discovered by the ancient Romans. There is no longer any doubt that the first Europeans to set foot on the American continent were not members of the expedition of Christopher Columbus, but the Vikings, Scandinavian navigators who first discovered Iceland, then Greenland, and then landed in North America, where they were even able to establish a colony. But archaeological finds on Oak Island, located near the Canadian province of Nova Scotia, can turn the whole story of discovery of the new world. Old. We are talking about a gladius sword, which a group of amateur archaeologists, led by Joe Van Pelitza, discovered during excavations. The chemical analysis of the sword confirmed its similarity with samples of Roman weapons from Europe. According to archaeologists, there is no doubt that a discovered sword was made by ancient Roman craftsmen and is genuine. The handle of the gladius, which apparently depicts one of the ancient Roman heroes, suggests that we are not dealing with a standard sword sword of a Roman legionnaire, but a gift item that was awarded for certain merits. Interestingly, the sword was originally discovered back in 1940 by local fishermen when it accidentally got tangled in a net. Only recently, the fisherman's family decided to give it to archaeologists. It turns out that some ancient expedition was able to swim across the Atlantic Ocean and reach the shores of America. Perhaps someone from the team accidentally dropped the sword into the water where the ship was wrecked, and the Gladius remained lying on the seabed for many years. Underground Palace, 1001 Columns the oldest and second-largest underground reservoir in Istanbul from Byzantine times is remarkable not only for its architecture, but also for many mysteries, which only become more numerous over time. The Felix Senna Cistern is located in the Binbar Direct district of the Fatih city district, 200 meters from the Column of Constantine, 150 meters from another luxurious cistern of Theodosius II, and 100 meters from the Sultan Ahmed tram stop. True, the entrance to the reservoir is hardly noticeable and you can accidentally pass by. In the Ottoman Empire, the already inactive structure was called Binbar Direct, 1001 Column. In fact, initially there were 224 columns in the cistern, and now there are 212 of them. When entering the room from the abundance of columns, it begins to seem that there are a really huge number of them, but it turns out that in Turkish, the word bimber simply means a large number in meaning 1001, while a lot. Of particular interest to researchers and travelers are the mysterious symbols on the columns, which are still clearly visible. Researchers anonymously claim that these are signs of masons who prepared columns for the cistern in the island of Marmara. True, supporters of the conspiracy theory are sure that these symbols belong to the Freemasons, who began to use the premises of an abandoned cistern for their meetings shortly after the fall of Constantinople. An unusually light sword from the 14th century and it also happened that ordinary workers cleaning the sewers discovered a sword of the 14th century. Just think, where are we and where is the 14th century? The total length of the fine is 112 centimeters, length of the blade itself is 93 centimeters. But the weight is a little more than one kilogram. Well, how can this be? Such a big sword and such a small weight. The ancient master facilitated the discovery due to the narrow blade and the presence of a thull when the blade was being cleaned, an inscription in gold was found on it, which had yet to be cleared and deciphered. But one thing is clear for sure, this sword clearly belonged to not a mere mortal. Underground Temple 
Many have heard about the mysterious megalith of the Incas, but few people know that there is a similar structure on the island of Malta, which introduces scientists to a stupa. The Republic of Malta is a tiny island nation located in the Maltese archipelago in the Mediterranean Sea. Until recently, no one suspected that a huge underground labyrinth temple was hidden in its depth. It was discovered only at the beginning of the 20th century. From the remains of pottery found inside, archaeologists concluded that it was built about 6,000 years ago by ancient people. They hollowed out more than 30 rooms in the limestone and connected them with stairs and tunnels. They contained human skeletons and animal bones, so some scholars believe that the site was used for burial. However, it is unclear why such a large number of rooms were needed for this purpose, so this version remains only a guess. Rooms are mostly round or oval in shape and are rather chaotic. In addition, from some rooms there is a descent to lower floors, going even deeper into the ground. The total area of the temple is about 500 meters square, which is quite a lot for an underground structure hollowed out by hand. The walls of the cave are covered with geometric drawings. In addition, a statue of a woman was found inside. Archaeologists suggested that this was probably the goddess of female strength and fertility, since matriarchy reigned in this part of the world at that time. But the most mysterious thing is not even the existence of an underground labyrinth, but in one of its rooms, the Oracle's Room. It refers to the so-called acoustic structures that ancient people built around the world. These rooms are built in such a way that they allow sounds to resonate at a specific frequency. There are similar rooms in the Egyptian pyramids. Scientists do not fully understand how it works and what is the purpose of such premises. The Oracle Room in the Maltese temple is made in the form of an ellipsoidal niche in the wall. The words spoken there in a low male voice immediately spread all the rooms. They will be heard even in remote corners, but all other sounds spoken by a different timbre are muffled, no one hears them. This phenomena remains a mystery along with other incomprehensible phenomena left to us by the builders of antiquity. Substance 7 billion years old Stardust is the oldest material on Earth from which we can learn about our parent stars, the origin of the carbon in our bodies, and the origin of the oxygen we breathe. Examining fragments of the Murchison meteorite that fell in September 1969 in Australia, scientists found particles of stardust that formed 5-7 billion years ago and is the oldest solid material ever found on Earth. The life path of old stars is approximately the same. They are formed from particles of dust and gas floating in space, which find each other, stick together and heat up. Then they burn for millions to billions of years and die, throwing into space the building blocks newly formed in their winds for future stars, planets, satellites, comets and asteroids, stardust. Luckily, some of these pre-solar grains, that is, solid particles formed before the birth of the Sun, were trapped in the Murchison meteorite, which, where they remained unchanged for billions of years and were eventually delivered to Earth. Aztec technology could help humanity. Researcher Roland Abel from the University of Montana, USA, conducted a study and found that the ancient agricultural technology of the Aztecs can benefit the civilization of the 21st century and save megacities from food shortages. The scientists carefully analyzed the technology which was widely used by the Aztecs. They created floating islands on Lake Texcoco, Chinampas. In fact, these were fields raised above the water on which the ancient people grew and harvested several crops a year. During the rainy season, such islands literally floated on the lake. The Aztecs added new layers of earth and fertilized them, and there were no problems with watering the plants. Chinampas provided fresh food to the population of large cities all year round. In particular, they could feed the population of such a city-state as Tenochtitlan, on the side of which the modern city of Mexico City is located. The heyday of technology came in 600-900 AD. However, the indigenous people of Mexico continue to use it to this day. Roland Abel found floating gardens in some suburban areas in Xochimilco. Local residents dig channels and layers of earth are poured onto special platforms. This allows you to reap a rich harvest even in dry periods. 
In addition, such technologies were found in antiquity and are still found among some people of South America, Asia, Oceania, and Africa. Abel concluded that floating gardens have proven themselves well over their thousand-year history as a highly effective technology that holds a potential solution for the megacities of our time. The use of Aztec technology can help solve the problem of hunger, which for many countries is becoming increasingly important due to population growth. Do you know what is the advantage of YouTube? The fact that the videos are coming out now and you can watch them many years later and they will never lose their relevance. YouTube preserves the video in its original form, as Amber does with insects. Huge Viking Cave System Scientists from the Archaeological Institute of Iceland have discovered an extensive system of man-made caves, the appearance of which is attributed to the Viking Age. According to archaeologists, the caves found in the Audi region were excavated in the middle of the 20th century. The size of the underground system is huge. No studies of such large-scale objects have yet been conducted on the territory of Iceland. To date, a church, a farm, and a priest's house have been discovered here. When Christianity arrived in Iceland around 1080, Odi was one of the first settlements to build a church. One of the caves which was discovered recently could serve as a nata helir, a medieval stool for cattle and horses. Archaeologists believe that the caves in Odi can tell a very large and interesting story. During Viking times, Odi was one of the most important cultural and political centers in Iceland and home to the powerful Odvager clan. Some under the scholar who wrote the early chronicles of the Norwegian kings was one of the most prominent members of the clan. The settlement developed into a major cultural and educational center where the patron saint of Iceland, Thorlakur Thorhalsson, was educated at the age of nine. Dinosaur Bulldog Scientists have discovered in Egypt the fossilized remains of an unusual dinosaur with tiny arms and a muzzle like a bulldog. The bones of the dinosaur, which has yet to receive an official name, have been found by experts at the Bahariya oasis in Egypt's western desert. Researchers say the creature was bipedal meaning it walked on two legs, had small teeth and very short arms. The predator, whose body length was about 6 meters, roamed the Sahara Desert 98 million years ago. This species belongs to a lizard-like family of Abelisaurid dinosaurs that flourished during the Cretaceous period, 145 to 66 million years ago, the last time period of the dinosaur era. Abelisaurid fossils have previously been found in Europe and many of the modern continents of the Southern Hemisphere, but never before in the Bahariya Formation. The discovery is based solely on a well-preserved neck-based vertebrae found during a 2016 National Geographic Society-funded expedition to the Bahariya Oasis. This is the oldest known abelisaurid fossil from northeast Africa and shows it that during the mid-Cretaceous, these carnivorous dinosaurs lived across much of the northern part of the continent, from east to west, from present-day Egypt to Morocco and further south, in Niger and perhaps even beyond. Abelisaurids were theropods. These dinosaurs are distinguished by hollow bones and three-toed limbs. They walked on two legs. Unfortunately, all of the Bahiria dinosaur fossils collected before World War II were destroyed during the Allied bombing of Munich in 1944. Mummy Mammoth with Wool and Claws Canadian gold miners found a mammoth baby mummy in the Klondike gold mines, Yukon Territory. The remains of a baby woolly mammoth have lain in the permafrost for over 30,000 years. Scientists determined that this is a female and gave her the nickname Nanchoga, which means big cub in hang. The body of the baby mammoth is perfectly preserved, even its claws and wool remained intact. Further analysis revealed that the female lived alongside the wild horses, cave lions, and giant prairie bison that once inhabited the area. 
Now the body of the mammoth is in the laboratory. Scientists are going to examine it and conduct analysis. The Yukon has always been famous for Ice Age finds. Paleontologists are delighted with this amazing find. Nunchoga is one of the most incredible Ice Age mummified animals ever discovered in the world. Archaeologists can't wait to explore it and make discoveries. Experts determined that the baby was about the same size as a 42,000-year-old woolly mammoth named Luba, discovered in Siberia in 2007. The existence of woolly mammoth in Canada's Yukon Territory has long been known, but 2021 research shows that they roamed there even 5,000 years ago. In the early Holocene, the environment in the Yukon changed dramatically due to climate change. For this reason, mammoth began to disappear from this territory. Milk Teeth of Young Neanderthals Three human milk teeth found in the Spanish cave of El Castillo belong to Neanderthals. Approximately 80-60,000 years ago, people of the modern anatomical type left Africa. They were carriers of the Upper Paleolithic archaeological culture. Approximately 40,000 years ago, they ended up in Europe, where for several millennia they coexisted with the Neanderthals living there. They finally disappeared 41-39,000 years ago, but scientists still do not have a final answer in what form their coexistence took place, but it is known for sure that the Neanderthal culture influenced the ancestors of modern people. Milk teeth were found in cultural layer 18, dating back to the transition from the Middle Paleolithic to the Upper Paleolithic. A more accurate analysis showed that the layer was 44,940-42,110 years ago. Scientists concluded that the teeth belonged to two or three children of indeterminate sex, aged from 4 or 5 to 9 or 11 years. They noted that the teeth were found in what is thought to be a butchery area. The children probably lived nearby and not necessarily at the same time. The features of these teeth have allowed paleoanthropologists to identify them as Neanderthal. Moreover, one of the teeth, the upper milk incisor of a child of 4-5 or five years old, did not fall out naturally, but as a result of an injury. Exquisite Artifacts from 3,000 Years Ago A team of archaeologists from China discovered six so-called sacrificial pits. The finds were made on the territory of the famous archaeological site Sanxingdu Settlement in the southwest of the country. Artifacts speak of the imagination and skill of the people who lived there between 1600 and 800 BC. The Sanxingdu culture is named after a fortified settlement that was located on the upper reaches of the Yangtze River. Archaeologists suggest that here, in the second millennium BC, was the first center of the Kingdom of Shu. Ruins with an area of about 12 km square were discovered by chance in the first half of the last century. To date, more than 50,000 relics have been discovered during the excavations of the monument. However, no written sources or human remains have yet been found. The most unusual finds were a box depicting real and mythical reptiles, a statue of a man with a snake's body, and a sacrificial altar about a meter high. It was also located in one of the pits where ancient people dropped their offerings to the sun, sky, earth, and deceased ancestors. The bronze sculpture of the half-snake, half-human is obviously made in full growth, 160 centimeters. The central part, with the body of a snake, the head of a man with bulging eyes, and a large fangs, is mounted on a jug, which in turn is on a square tray. On the monster's head is a painted vessel. The three parts of the composition belong to three different cultures. The tray belongs to the Zhu tribe from northwest China. The jug belongs to the inhabitants of the middle and lower reaches of the Yellow River of that time, and the sculpture itself belongs to the Shu Kingdom. The relic proves the important role of Sanxingdu in Chinese civilization and close ties with other ancient cultures. Volcano with Blue Flame a volcanic eruption or molten lava flow is one of the most spectacular sights nature has to offer. But there is nothing more amazing and unusual than the blue flames and strange magma 
of the Kauai Jan Volcano, located on the island of Java. This unusual natural phenomena is explained by the fact that for some reason there is a lot of sulfur in the volcanic gas of Kavak Jan. Even more mysteriously, it is part of a whole complex of volcanoes, but this blue flame, sulfur burns blue, can only be seen in this place. Moreover, this glow can only be seen at night, as it is too weak, although this gas burns at a temperature of 600 degrees Celsius. It turns out that when sulfur comes out of the ground in a gaseous state, it ignites very quickly and forms these incredibly beautiful bluish flames. 1,500-year-old sword a resident of the village of Pokrovka in the Primorsky territory, Russia, donated it to the Museum Reserve of the History of the Far East, named after a senium sword whose age exceeds one and a half thousand years. The men found an ancient weapon during agricultural work. According to an amateur archaeologist, he was plowing a field and spotted a sword. For advice, the men turned to the museum staff. Experts came to the conclusion that the weapons belonged to the era of the Three Kingdoms. This is the period from the 1st to the 7th century AD. Based on the similar objects, the artifact was dated to the 5th 7th centuries. According to the chief curator of the museum, the sword will be handed over for study and later sent for restoration. Most likely, it will replenish the collection in the magic of the blade hole and become available for viewing by museum visitors. Cyprus, which is more than 5,000 years old. The old guy has been hiding in the forests of South America for thousands of years, and among the people he is called great-grandfather. On our planet, there are two types of oldies, trees that represent clonal colonies and lone trees. The first ones are clones of the same tree, that is, the tree itself can be relatively young and sometimes even like a grove, but its root system is very old. For example, this is exactly what the Pando forest is. According to estimates, this forest is about 80,000 years old, and maybe many times more, although outwardly, the forest looks like a completely young poplar grove. It is more difficult with a single tree. It grows continuously for centuries and sometimes for millennia. Its trunk is the same age as the root system. It is from this category that the Fitzroy, which was nicknamed Great Grandfather, grows in the forest in Chile. The Great Grandfather, according to preliminary estimates, is 5,484 years old, which means that the tree is older than the previous record holder by about 600 years. That Great Grandfather overtook is called Methuselah, and he grows up in the California National Park. Fitzroys are one of the largest trees in the world and belong to the same cypress family as redwoods. Fitzroys grow in Argentina and Chile, but in a very limited area. They are considered one of the oldest trees on the planet. They grow very slowly, but at the same time, they live for a long time. There are many specimens whose age has exceeded a couple of millennia, but great-grandfather managed to break even the records of his fellows. Apparently, he is much older than all the trees on the planet. It's hard to imagine, but this tree began to grow several centuries before real writing appeared. According to research, it appeared among the Sumerians around 2750 BC. Determining the age of such trees is quite difficult. It is necessary to conduct a number of studies. Wiken Shipyard in Berka Swedish archaeologists during excavations on the small island of Björko, where the city of Berka, a large early medieval trading center, was located, discovered a Viking-era shipyard, the first find of its kind. In addition to the structure itself, the scientists had at their disposal tools for working wood, grindstones, and numerous rivets. Traditionally, the period from the end of the 8th to the middle of the 11th century in European history is referred to as the Viking Age. This is the time when the Scandinavians carried out military and commercial expansion, mastered the remote northern lands of Iceland, Greenland, the Faroe Islands, and even reached Canada. One of the most famous monuments of this era is located on the small Swedish island of Björk, located about 40 kilometers from Stockholm. 
There are the remains of an early medieval city with a harbor, a wolf, and several necropolises. Archaeological work in Berka, which is still ongoing, has made it possible to discover a huge number of finds. Only burials, many of which belong to noble people, scientists have identified about 3,000, some of which were subsequently excavated. So, archaeologists at the end of the 19th century found a Viking burial there, which a few years ago geneticists called a female warrior, but this conclusion was soon disputed. Excavations revealed the remains of fortification numerous buildings, including the estate of the builder of the first Christian church in Sweden, a large number of household items, handicrafts and jewelry. This is the first building of its kind discovered, but the finds convincingly demonstrate that this was the shipyard where people serviced their ships. Through systematic research, mapping, and drone surveys, archaeologists have established that Burka was not only an important urban center, but also had great potential in the field of maritime navigation, which allowed for intensive trade. Temple Complex in France Archaeologists have found a large temple complex from the time of Roman Gaul in northwestern France. Previously, in the territories that were once called Gaul, archaeologists have discovered many ancient sacred sites, but the new find seems very important even against this background. Not only is the sanctuary itself quite well preserved, but the surrounding buildings can still be seen. All this together gives an idea of the daily life of both the servants of the temple complex and visitors. The name comes from the Roman name of the Celtic tribes, the Gauls who fought for their freedom with Rome for a long time. Gaul was called the lands that are part of such modern countries as France, Luxembourg, Belgium, the Netherlands, and Switzerland. Excavations were carried out on an area of more than 7 hectares. The cult complex consists of a large sanctuary bounded on both sides by a 60-meter gallery with columns. Two temples, a larger one and a smaller one, are typical Romana Celtic phenoms. This is the name of the Temple of Square Masonry, in the center of which a whole sanctuary was built, enclosed by an internal square gallery. The figure of the deity to whom the temple is dedicated was placed in the hole. The faithful read their prayers and made offerings in the gallery. A complex of two phenoms at once is a rare find. Archaeologists suggest that the large temple was dedicated to the main deity or deities of the sanctuary, the small one to deities of secondary importance. The temples were built in the 1st century BC, immediately after the Roman conquest of Gaul and they functioned, according to experts, for at least five centuries until the 4th century AD. On the territory of the complex, archaeologists discovered a small bronze figurine of the god Mars. It can be assumed that at least one of the temples was dedicated to him. Interestingly, in Roman Gaul, Mars was not so much a bloodthirsty god of war as a benevolent figure, a protector, a healing deity. In addition to the two temples, experts unearthed residential buildings and baths with an area of 120 square meters. Baths are an indispensable element of the Roman lifestyle. Judging by their size, they were intended for public use, including visitors to the sanctuary. Tunnel there have been legends about underground passages in the center of the Dnieper for a long time. However, what if they are real? Workers were building a subway in the city of Dnipropetrovsk, Ukraine, in 2018 when they accidentally discovered a mysterious tunnel. Of course, it was not on the maps, and the builders were not ready for such a development of events. Later, it turned out that the workers had unearthed the main drainage channel during the reign of Catherine II. Moreover, artifacts of antiquity were also found. This was not the first discovery of ancient tunnels underground. During the laying of sewer pipes in 1914, an ancient weapon and two skeletons were found in a tunnel near the Potomkin Palace. Most likely, these were the dead soldiers. Interestingly, 12 regiments were involved in the construction of Yekaterinoslav, but after its completion, only a part of them returned to their former service. Where the rest went and what they did is unclear. The largest sword on earth. 
One of the most famous and at the same time the largest combat two-handed swords is kept in the Museum of the Netherlands, the city of Leeuwarden, Frisia. This amazing sword is 2150 mm long and weighs 6600 grams. He has the stamp Enri, Jesus of Nazareth, King of the Jews. It was forged in the middle of the 15th century in Germany. The handle of this sword is made of oak and trimmed with goatskin. Scientists speculate that these weapons were the property of Pierre Donia, Big Pierre, a French pirate and a fierce independence fighter. Legend has it that he could cut off several of their hats in an instant. It is believed that Pierre got the sword as a trophy from the Lansconets, who revered him as a banner and only he could use it due to his physical abilities. His height was equal to the length of the sword, 2.15 meters. In 1515, his possessions were destroyed destroyed and burned by the military from the so-called Black King. His wife was brutally deprived of her life and this hatred of murderers prompted him to contribute his share in the Galdarn War. Two-handed swords occupy a significant and important place among other types of cool-bladed weapons. This magnificent weapon is the pride of any modern museum, and we can only guess how much effort Big Pierre had to use to swing this sword. Strange Box in China Construction workers in Taizhou, China, were working to widen the roadway when they suddenly stumbled upon something unusual in the ground. Oddly enough, no one knew what it could be. Whatever it is, it's clearly older than the city itself. Soon they began to dig up the ground around the find in order to understand what it was. But as soon as they realized what they had stumbled upon, they immediately realized that they needed more help. In the city of Taizhou, China, an ancient object was found at a depth of 6 feet during road repairs. What they unearthed for several hours was not just a box. They immediately understood this. A little later, the workers guessed that it was a tomb. They called archaeologists for further excavations. They were lucky to dig up the grave without violating its tightness. At first glance, it seemed that there was linen, silks, and an incomprehensible liquid. But as soon as they looked closely, they found something else. There was a body inside. It was not just a body, but a mummy. Archaeologists have established that 700 years ago, this mummy was a woman. After examining the contents of the grave, the jewelry, the way the body was wrapped, archaeologists have established that this woman came from the Min dynasty. The body was so well preserved that it was not difficult to get it from the grave. Most of the fabrics are also well preserved. If you look closely, you can even see facial features. Look how well preserved her shoes are. Incredible. Many people forget that China is much older than, for example, the United States. The history of China goes back thousands of years. Such cases are not uncommon here. Just imagine, near your parking space, you can find a mummy that is 2,000 years old. House from the Depth of Centuries with special excitement, archaeologists descended underground after the Metro Builders in 1985, where, during the construction of the Borovitska metro station in Moscow, Russia, a small red brick house was discovered at a depth of 6 meters. Everything in it was preserved in its original form, not only the walls, but also the deco, dishes, furniture. Historians have established that the building dates back to the middle of the 16th century and once belonged to the village of Steria Vagankova. Yuri Sopranenko, in his book Legends of Underground Moscow, writes that this is the construction of the Oprichny courtyard, which went underground due to a natural disaster. Luxurious Villa at a depth of 12 meters in Rome, for many years they have not been able to complete the construction of a new metro line. Archaeologists are interfering. In early March, Italian researchers presented another sensational discovery to the press. At the Amber Aretum Ipaneo station, under construction since 2013, at a depth of 12 meters, the remains of Edomus, a luxurious city villa of the 2nd century, were discovered. The discovery was a continuation of the finds of previous years. In 2016, at the same construction site, at a depth of 9 meters, archaeologists dug out an army barracks. 
built at the beginning of the 2nd century under Emperor Hadrian. It was 1,200 square meters with a long central corridor and 39 rooms about 4 by 4 meters in size, probably soldiers' bedrooms. In each such chamber, with an area of only 16 square meters, could accommodate 6 or more people. The interior decoration of the premises was modest in an army way. Only in the officer's zone, the floors were covered with a simple black and white mosaic, and the walls were decorated with unpretentious frescoes. Even then, scientists suggested that the barracks was part of a larger complex, but which one? The answer lay below, at a depth of 12 meters. The barracks were connected to the same ridge mansion, which archaeologists have now told about. The remains of a stairway leading from the domus to the barracks were also found. We never imagined that we would find a mansion here with a courtyard, a fountain, and at least 14 rooms," said Simone Moretta, scientific director of the excavation. According to archaeologists, the mansion was built at the beginning of the second century at the same time as the barracks, but later the domus was completed and the interior decoration was changed. Found in 2016, the barracks actually turned out to be part of a larger complex, but which one? And who owned the luxurious mansion? The media have already nicknamed the villa the House of the Centurion, and journalistic nicknames usually stick in the memory, even if they are not true. Centurion is too low a rank for the owner of such a rich mansion. Mayan Giant Mask in Mexico, during excavations on the Yucatan Peninsula, archaeologists have discovered a giant image of an unknown Mayan deity. Archaeologists have only just announced the discovery now, although the artifact itself was discovered back in 2017. A giant mask the size of a man was found at the archaeological site of Yucania, near the modern city of Motul. Since then, researchers at the National Institute of Anthropology and History of Mexico have painstakingly worked to restore it. The discovery was not reported for the safety of the artifact itself. There was a risk that it could be reached and destroyed by treasure hunters. The artifact itself puzzled researchers. It is dated to the late pre-classical Maya period, about 300 BC to 150 AD. The mask is an image of the face of an unknown deity or some very important person, a representative of the elite of the society of that period of time. Interestingly, after the restoration, archaeologists again buried the mask. National Institute of Anthropology and History of Mexico explained this by the fact that this monument and archaeological site do not yet have legal protection. Pot with money and more when laying tunnels for the construction of the future Novokuznetska station in Moscow, Russia, a large pot was found, in which there were almost 20,000 silver coins from the beginning of Peter's reign, the end of the 17th century. Fossilized remains of ancient animals, birds, and fish are almost constant finds of metro builders. Skeletons and traces belong to the Cretaceous, Jurassic, Carboniferous, and even the Cambrian more than 500 million years ago, Periods. Statues that are over 2,000 years old in Greece, at the construction site of the known hole in the city of Paeania, near the international airport of Athens, archaeologists have found two ancient statues, which are estimated to be approximately 2,300 years old. The found complex of white marble consists of two female figures. The statues have survived only in fragments, but it is obvious that the women had different social status. A sick woman sits on the right side, her legs resting on a low stand. She is dressed in a tunic and robe. To the left is a maid or a doctor, supporting her head with her left hand. According to scientists, such gravestone reliefs are characteristic of the 4th century. The found statues were transferred to the archaeological museum. Archaeologists continue to search for relics at the construction site. Dragon skin. 
In England, engineers from the Northern Electricity Company, while working in the village of Old Work, discovered a richly decorated fragment of a leather product, possibly medieval. The artifact depicts a dragon or other mythological animal. The leather creature, however, doesn't look particularly formidable and looks more like Toothless from How to Train Your Dragon than a deadly Targaryen pet. Than a deadly Targaryen pet. And if you look closely, it's not a dragon, but another mythological animal, a wyvern that is displayed on a piece of skin. The term wyvern was once proposed by the famous writer Andrei Sapkowski, the author of The Witcher. Two paws instead of four is the main difference between a wyvern and a classic dragon, which relies on a full set of lower limbs. The found item is really rare and interesting, and not only because it hints at a rich burial somewhere nearby. The most intriguing thing about this piece of skin is the wyvern dragon depicted on it and its preliminary dating, the Middle Ages. The Middle Ages is a very general name for a very long and very varied period. During this time, the attitude towards dragons and the symbolism of this image has undergone radical changes and several times. Romans, Saxons, Vikings, representatives of these cult treated dragons correctly, in a modern way, with deep reverence and without one-sided negativity. Creatures as complex as dragons have always been ambiguous characters. Simple medieval people, however, were very afraid of dragons, not so much for religious reasons, but for their everyday reasons. Who likes the dragon urine released in flight when it comes into contact with human skin causes rotting and death of damaged flesh? In this context, the image of a wyvern found in old work embossed on a leather artifact is of particular interest to researchers. What period of the Middle Ages does it belong to? What visual style does it correspond to? Where was it made? Who owned it? A small two-legged dragon can tell archaeologists a long and very unusual story. Treasure from the time of Ivan the Terrible in the summer of 2018, archaeologists discovered a treasure from the time of Ivan the Terrible thanks to the construction of a highway in Pavlovsky Passad, Russia. The find dates back to the beginning of the 17th century. This is a ceramic vessel with 623 silver coins, the first large peasant treasure with such contents. The most surprising thing for scientists was that the treasure was found intact where the owner buried it 400 years ago. The bulk of the peasant's savings are new coins that have not had time to be in circulation. In total, archaeologists found 6 rubles, 23 kopecks in the pot. Before the troubles began, this was an amount sufficient to build a house or buy a working horse and a cow. Researchers suggest that the wealth went to the owner as a result of a successful deal. In addition to coins, there was a copper cross in the vessel, which most likely was supposed to protect the treasure from strangers. A flower 100 million years old In Myanmar, scientists have discovered amber in which a flower has been preserved. The plant is about 100 million years old, its diameter is only 2 millimeters, but at the same time, you can see under a microscope about 50 stamens arranged in a spiral. Scientists suggest that the fragment found was a part of large inflorescence. The authors attributed to the find to a previously unknown genus and species of angiosperms of the Cretaceous period, given it the name Valvoloculus peristaminis. Studying the ancient flower will help shed light on the evolution of plants and maybe learn more about geological processes. The fact is that the tectonic plate on which Myanmar is located separated from the ancient supercontinent of Gondwana, in which it bordered the northwestern tip of present-day Australia. This happened according to various estimates from 200 million to 500 million years ago. The flower, preserved in amber, apparently grew in the forest on Gondwana. And if they consider that it is 100 million years old, it means that the split of the continents occurred later than geologists assume. Tunnel to the Underworld 
In Mexico, under a busy street, workers unexpectedly stumble upon a secret tunnel with amazing Aztec carvings. One of the workers during the preparatory work for the construction of a bus stop discovered the remains of an underground structure that had remained untouched since ancient times. After the incredible find, construction work was immediately stopped, and Mexican archaeologists were invited to the site. According to researchers, the Aztecs built the underground passage in the 15th century, during the reign of Emperor Montezuma I. Scientists inside the tunnel came across ancient objects made of maiolica, porcelain, and glass. According to archaeologists, the tunnel is decorated with carvings and paintings and was dedicated to the Aztec god of fertility and water, Tlaloc. The researchers noted that the mysterious structure found by a worker in Mexico was conceived by Montezuma as part of a ritual tunnel into the vault of the dead, which the Aztecs believed in. Egyptian mummy got a name a high-profile event took place within the walls of Stanford University, USA. They uncovered the secret of an ancient mummy. The exhibit was kept in the Museum of the Educational Institution for more than 100 years. Initially, it was part of the private collection of the founder of the university. But during the earthquake in 1906, the sarcophagus was severely damaged and was no longer exhibited to the general public. The scientists didn't care either. The discovery happened by accident. This spring, a student of the museum culture course, Ariel Algazi, was examining the tomb and suddenly noticed an inscription. Since nothing was mentioned about this text in any documents, the girl decided to do it herself. It turned out that the woman's name, Sensualentis, was written on the sarcophagus as well as an epitaph. Let this name remain for centuries. Scientists who took up the study of this artifact managed to establish that the woman died around 30 BC. It is noteworthy that the inscriptions of that era, which are so well preserved, are almost never found. Beer Flood in London Many are sure that the event of 1814 is a legend. But no. On October 17, 1814, at the then largest brewery Horseshoe, one of the wooden wads for storing beer exploded, the height of which was approximately 10 meters. But that was only the beginning. A powerful jet of liquid simply demolished the valve of another similar capacity, and then the domino mode turned on. Almost 2 million liters of beer beer poured into the streets of London. The force of this drunken tsunami was so powerful that eight people died, but in fact, there were more victims. A huge number of people immediately rushed to drink free beer and got alcohol poisoning. What is known about Egyptian animals? Quite often, during excavations, scientists had to deal with images of animals. This is especially true of excavations that are being conducted in Egypt. But, despite the fact that the data is quite old, scientists managed to unravel the mystery of the state of ecology more than six years ago. The images that were encountered are animals. They were carved on stone, wood, on ceremonial accessories. And it turns out that according to the frescoes found on the territory of Egypt, at that time they were about 37 species of large mammals, but now there are only 8 of them left. More animals died during droughts. These are varieties of lions, zebras, and even wild dogs. The Mystery of the Origin of the Black Death the year 1347 marks the outbreak of one of the worst epidemics in European history. Hundreds of years later, scientists have finally managed to unravel the mystery of the origin of the Black Death. The bacterium Yersinia pestis was carried by fleas and lice. It spread rapidly and in subsequent years destroyed up to 60% of the population of Western Eurasia. And even after that, the pathogen repeatedly caused local outbreaks over several centuries. Scientists have long argued about the origin of the disease. Hypotheses based on historical records and generic data considered a range of possible places of origin from Western Eurasia to East Asia. Some scholars are looking for the roots of the Black Death in the Karakoram region of South Asia. Others consider the Mongol Empire a possible source of the plague. They suspect that even Genghis Khan could have died from the plague. 
However, Maria Spiru and her colleagues took a different path. Archaeologists discovered graves near Lake Isakul in Kyrgyzstan a century and a half ago. Some tombstones point to a previously unknown epidemic that occurred in 1338 and 1339, that is, almost 10 years before the arrival of the Black Death in Europe. Since then, there have been rumors that those who died in the cemeteries of Kara, Zhegek and Burana could have died from the plague. To clarify this issue, the research team took samples from seven medieval plague victims. The tissues of the disease contained Yersinia pestis DNA. Scientists compared the DNA sequences of the plague genomes from Kyrgyzstan with 203 modern and 47 historical representatives. Using this data, they recreated the genealogical tree of the plague and tried to classify the pathogen from Kyrgyzstan in terms of evolution. Result? The plague DNA from Kyrgyzstan is more original and older than any other Yersinia pestis gene sequence known to date since the 14th century. DNA samples from Kyrgyzstan now show that the ancestor of all four plague lines came from the area around Lake Isakul. Napoleon's defeat in the battle with the rabbits it was hardly possible to imagine that the famous Napoleon Bonaparte could suffer such a shameful loss from a herd of rabbits. In 1807, in July, the commander decided to celebrate the signing of the Treaty of Tilsit by hunting Eard. Before the hunt, he decided to have dinner, and at that time, 3,000 rabbits were sitting in cages, waiting for the start of the hunt. And when it started and the animals were released into the field, they did not run away in fear but attacked the hunters, including including Bonaparte. The rabbits clung to his clothes, threw themselves at his feet, and the Corsican had to shamefully flee. And the reason was quite simple. Instead of wild rabbits for hunting, they found tame ones that were not afraid of people. The Fall of the Largest City in North America in North America, there was the largest city of Cahokia, which included more than 120 burial mounds. The city was located in the flat plain of the Mississippi River, and about 20,000 people lived in it. At the same time, for comparison, this is much more than in modern European cities. But there is evidence that sometimes the population of the city reached 40,000 people. Oddly enough, but the ancient settlement existed until the 13th century, and then fell into decay. There is no data on why this happened, and many scientists believe that it was due to a natural disaster, but recently, during research, it was revealed that the city was destroyed as a result of severe floods. 600 million gap in the fossil record a fossil smaller than a sesame seed has revealed the unseen early history of animals on Earth. Previous phylogenetic studies modeling the evolution of groups of related organisms suggested that the animals that gave rise to sea sponges, sea anemones, worms, and crustaceans first appeared 600-700 million years ago. But until now, scientists have not had undeniable fossil evidence for the existence of any animals before 575 million years ago. A new fossil, apparently the ancestor of a Precambrian sea sponge, has been discovered in 600 million year old rocks in China. Its hundreds of thousands of microscopic cells are perfectly preserved in phosphate minerals. The body consists of three waist-like openings, the walls of which are riddled with minute pores, just like modern sponges, which pump water through the openings to filter out food. Earlier, tiny fossils containing 8 or 16 cells were found in the same rock which were thought to be sponge embryos. The new fossil is more convincing because it finally shows an adult animal. A rock layer in southern China called the Jushantou Formation is known for its microfossils. Painting in a Cave Archaeological research is still ongoing in Turkey. According to them, cave paintings were found near the city of Konya, which date back to the Neolithic era. Initially, this was taken for an ancient map of the world, which depicted a community in Chattel, which existed here about 9,000 years ago. But after the fresco was examined, scientists came to the conclusion that it depicts a volcanic eruption. And if you look geographically, then this is also confirmed by the presence of two hills, which are located located not far from this place. A pumice stone was also found near this place, the age of which is about 8,900 years. The Roman senator was a horse. 
The story is pretty well known. The horse of the eccentric Caligula, named Incited, was so adored by the owner that he had an ivory stall, purple blankets, a marble stable, and a necklace of precious stones. Caligula made his horse a senator and planned to promote him to consul. Most likely it was not the madness of the ruler, but his mockery of the then senators, they say. Even the horse will cope with their tasks. Skull with drill base the Ottoman Empire throughout its existence waged constant wars, capturing more and more new territories. So in 1480, the Italian city of Otranto was captured. The troops of the Ottoman Empire plundered the city, killed the local population while choosing mainly the adult male population. In total, no more than 800 people were left alive in the city, who were offered to convert to Islam in exchange for freedom. But the people refused, and they were executed. After 300 years, these residents were canonized as saints and were considered the patrons of the city. But after, during the excavations, scientists were attracted by one skull in which about 16 holes were drilled. Scientists have suggested that the holes were not the cause of death, but were drilled after the person had already died, in order to extract bone powder. And it was used as a medicine. Toilet Disaster in the Roman Empire more than 800 years ago, when the Holy Roman Empire was not yet Germany, a story happened there that would have been very comical if not for the dead people. In 1184, King Henry VI of Germany was making a detour of the Erfurt region and decided to meet nobles from all over the Holy Empire at the Petersburg Citadel there. There were too many guests and on July 25th, 1184, the second floor of the building simply could not stand it and collapsed. The nobility fell through the first floor into the basement, which was just a restroom. About 60 people drowned in feces. King Henry escaped by accident. He was not standing on a wooden floor, but in a niche with a stone floor. Mystery of Ancient Burials in Great Britain in medieval Europe, rich and noble people were sometimes buried as if they had just fallen asleep. That is, not in coffins or sarcophaguses, but in beds. At the same time, scientists have long puzzled over how and why the tradition of bed burial spread from Eastern Europe to Britain. A recent study provides answers to these and other questions. It showed that burial in beds in England began in the 7th century AD, and this rite was considered exclusively female. That is, men were buried in ordinary coffins. The tradition arose with the arrival of Christianity in this territory. Over time, it became a common ritual throughout the Europe. But how is burial on a bed related to Christianity in general, and why did women spread this rite? In a recent study published in Medieval Archaeology, scientists analyzed 72 bad burials in different European countries, from Slovakia to England. At the same time, they immediately noticed that in England, only women were buried in bad. This prompted them to conclude that bad burial practice began to spread in Europe at a time when women were actively moving around Europe. After the fall of the Roman Empire in 476 AD, Christianity fell out of favor. England at that time generally became almost completely pagan. The situation changed in the 7th century when the church actively began the conversion of non-Christian regions to Christianity. To this end, Pope Gregory I took various measures, in particular, he encouraged marriages between Christian women and non-Christian men. Moreover, Christian women tried to marry men who had a high status in society. They eventually converted their husbands to Christianity and thus promoted their religion in society. In search of husbands from among the elite, they went to different countries of Europe, including England. At the same time, women also brought funeral rites. Therefore, such burials eventually became associated in England with femininity and Christianity. So why did Christians between the 5th and 7th centuries bury people in baths rather than coffins? It should be understood that in those days, not everyone had wooden baths. This furniture was a luxury and spoke of the status of a person. Many people slept simply on straw mattresses. Christian women tried to look for wealthy husbands from the elite of society. In addition, death itself in the Christian religion is not considered the final end for a person. Therefore, Christians equated it with eternal sleep. That is, people thus emphasized their attitude to death. 
However, the tradition of burying people in bed did not last long. Subsequently, coffins began to be used for this. I will note that this is far from the most unusual rite. For example, in China, it was customary to bury his servants and warriors alive along with the royal person. Microscopy reveals ancient secrets By tiny details, scientists recreate the life of long-disappeared states. Photomicrographs of archaeological artifacts showcase their hidden beauty and reveal ancient secrets of how they were created and used in ancient times. Findings of ancient mummies, long-vanished cities, ancient tools, jewelry, and other objects help archaeologists piece together the past of mankind, while imaging technologies allow research that does not damage fragile materials. With the help of microscopy, x-rays, magnetic radiometry, infrared, and ultraviolet light, scientists can access hidden evidence about the life of ancient people. For example, 17th-century Persian textiles contain fibers of silk thread that were individually wrapped in thin strips of metal. In another striking image on a ceramic title from Gordian, dating from the first half of the 6th century BC, basal inclusions are visible. According to Mary-Claude Bolo, director of the exhibition, these inclusions could tell archaeologists whether the shingles were made locally or brought from other areas. Based on this information, it is possible to draw up historical trade routes. An analysis of the light spots on the gold bead of Fiora's queen Toa base cloak is expected to allow researchers to trace the geological origin of the gold. Molasses flood in Boston. And on January 15, 1919, in the American town of Boston, Massachusetts, molasses, a sweet, vicious substance made from sugar cane or sugar beet, spilled over the city. It happened on the premises of the Purity Distilling Company and its molasses processing plant. A huge reservoir, 15 meters high and 27 meters in diameter, exploded and 10 million liters of molasses poured into the city. The substance flooded neighboring streets, killed 21 people and several horses, and another 150 were injured to varying degrees. There is evidence that the sweet wave was almost 8 meters high and spilled at a speed of 56 kilometers per hour. New Artifacts of Pre-Columbian America South America is an amazing continent with a lot of history yet to be discovered. Peru, after Egypt, is one of the most interesting countries in the world in terms of studying the history of ancient civilizations. The Chavin de Huantar complex, located at an altitude of 3,180 meters in the Peruvian Andes, consists of several platforms made of stone blocks with different reliefs and buildings adjacent to them. The buildings are divided among themselves by several squares. To date, archaeologists have 15 phases in the history of the creation of the complex. At the same time, the earliest buildings date back to approximately 1200 BC. After 500 BC, Chavin de Junta fell into disrepair. The Chavin de Junta complex includes a huge network of stone-lined corridors, staircases and rooms, including underground ones. The buildings are interconnected by a system of ventilation and drainage channels. Since 2008, Chavin de Junta has been working on creating a three-dimensional digital model of the facility using laser scanning technology and acoustic studies of the interior. In 2018, remotely controlled mobile cameras were involved in the study of the ruins of the archaeological complex, thanks to which almost 30 more new tunnels and several human burials were found. And in 2019, when using one of these cameras, a previously unknown room with an unidentifiable artifact was discovered. Archaeologists were able to get into the chamber itself only in 2022. The artifact turned out to be a carved stone bowl weighing 17 kilograms. The bowl is made in the shape of a condor, so the artifact adorns the head of a bird, its wings, and tail. The age of the Condor Gallery is about 3,000 years, and the building under which it is located was built at the very first stages of the formation of Chavin de Juanta. Statues of High Priest Imatha 
Experts completed work on the necropolis of Kamal Kamasin necropolis, where the Mastaba tomb of Imifo Impin Nikapata, the high priest of the god Pata, the main deity of Memphis, the capital of the country during the Old Kingdom and the first intermediate period of ancient Egyptian history, is located. The most important and surprising find of this year was a hoard of more than a hundred figurines of Imefa with the full name of the priest engraved on the right hand. This is an unprecedented type of funerary figurine, each unique in form and concept, ranging in size from 15 to 30 centimeters. 38 blocks of fragments of blocks with inscriptions and reliefs from the ceiling of the burial chamber were also recovered from the Imafa Mastaba. These fragments, inscribed with two parallel strips of hieroglyphic text with the names and titles of the priests, make it possible to reconstruct almost completely the ceiling of the chamber and finally fix the content of the inscription. Mysterious Golden Plate during plumbing work near the village of Rinalarek on the island of Java, workers accidentally discovered a stone chest. Inside were kept 22 small plates of pure gold. The stone vault, 15 by 13 and a half by 6 centimeters, was completely intact. Inside were plates of gold, 18 karat purity. Each plate is engraved with an inscription in the ancient language of the inhabitants of Java. Scientists have established that the names of locapels are written on the plates, the divine guardians of the cardinal points in Hinduism and Tantric Buddhism. There are eight such deities in Buddhism. On the island of Java, in addition, the patron of the center of everything was revered, and altogether the deities were called Devati Navasanga, nine divine guardians. Locapel statues can often be found in Indonesia. They were also depicted on the emblem of the Majapahit Empire, which existed from 1293 to 1520 AD. At that time, locapels were especially revered on the island of Java. They found gold plates, according to scientists, were created earlier than the Majapahit Empire. Thus, their confirmation that the ancient Javanese worshipped the guardians of the cardinal directions over a thousand years ago. Coin with the image of the goddess of the moon at the bottom of the sea of the coast during underwater work, Israeli archaeologists found a coin which is about 1,850 years old. A bronze coin in very good condition was found at the bottom of the Mediterranean Sea near the beach near Haifa. It depicts the goddess Moon. She personifies the planet satellite of the same name, as well as the zodiac sign, Cancer. The artifact probably belongs to a series of 13 coins, 12 of which correspond to the signs of the zodiac, the latter with a full zodiac wheel. Scientists believe that the coinage was in Egyptian Alexandria, and on the found coin there is an inscription, the eighth year. This corresponds to the reign of Emperor Antonius Pius, who led the Roman Empire from 138 to 161 AD. Such finds, which have lain at the bottom for hundreds of years, speak of close ties between ports in ancient times. Ghostly Traces of Ancient People Archaeologists have discovered many mysterious ghost footprints in the Great Salt Lake Desert of Utah. According to scientists, the tracks are visible only after rain, they are filled with moisture and become darker. After drying, they disappear again. Initially, the team found only a few traces in July this year. After a thorough inspection of the surrounding area using GPR, at least 88 footprints were identified, belonging to adults and children under 5 years old. Ghost prints were left at least 10,000 years ago when the area was a vast wetland. However, researchers suspect that the footprints could have been left 12,000 years ago during the last ice age. People seemed to be walking in shallow water, and the sand quickly filled their tracks, but there was a layer of dirt underneath the sand, which kept the print intact after being filled. Less than 2 kilometers from where the footprints were found, a previous research team found a hunter-gatherer camp, dating back 12,000 years ago, that could have been inhabited by the people who left the footprints, the scientists said. Ring with the image of Pallas Athena 
An unusual ring with the image of the Greek goddess Pallas Athena became an accidental find of archaeologists during the study of the ancient Russian settlement of the 14th century at the Sabino II site near the Kulikova field. A ring of quality casting and amazing preservation. On the upper platform there is a figure of a woman in drapery. Her head is protected by a helmet. In her left hand she holds a spear. At the feet on the left is a massive shield with the image of the Gorgon Medusa. On the right is a snake. Behind the back are powerful wings that can symbolize the goddess Nike. All these attributes are obligatory for the image of Pallas Athena, a warrior maiden, a representative of the highest world all-conquering power, one of the most revered goddesses of ancient Greece. She was one of the 12 great Olympic gods and was revered as the goddess of knowledge, arts and crafts, the patroness of cities and states, sciences and craftsmanship, intelligence, skill, ingenuity. According to him, the decoration, although found in the field, is clearly not peasant. In the 19th century, the territory where the excavations are now taking place belonged to the princess Golitsa. According to the scientists, a representative of the princely family could have dropped this ring. Today, scientists are looking for analogues of an unusual find. Its study will be continued in the future. Ancient Funeral Wagon this incredibly well-preserved 4,000-year-old wagon, made of oak, was discovered in the village of El Chashin near Lake Seven in Armenia. It is the oldest known wagon in the world and is currently on display at the History Museum of Armenia in Yerevan. This wagon was built by the El Cheshen Matsumar culture, aka Etiuni. It is generally believed that they were Indo-Europeans and most likely spoke a Proto-Armenian language. The oldest winery, the oldest leather shoes, the oldest straw skirt, the oldest human brain and the oldest wagon have all been found in Armenia. If you look at the biblical maps, Armenia is the place where the Garden of Eden was, and Eden is the place where Adam and Eve were created, hence the birthplace of mankind. Perhaps Armenia is the place where humanity was born and reborn. He still seems alive. On May 8, 1950, peat miners discovered a corpse in the Bielskovdal peat bog in Denmark that looked so fresh that at first the workers thought it was a recent murder victim. The man was lying at a depth of two and a half meters in the fetal position. On the head, there was a pointed sheepskin hat with fur inside, held by a strap under the chin. A leather belt was tied around the waist. Other clothes were missing, they probably decayed. Short hair was almost completely hidden under the cap and the stubble on the chin testified that the man had not shaved on the day of his death. Around the mummy's neck was a tightly tied noose of woven leather. According to radiocarbon analysis, the man died around 375-210 BC. Based on the amount of strontium isotopes in his hair, this man spent the last year in Denmark, but in the last six months he traveled at least 20 miles. An X-ray showed that the man's head was intact, but his heart, lungs and liver were well preserved. The man from Tallinn died at the age of 40. His height was about 1.61 meters. Investigators concluded that the man died by Henning, not strangulation. However, researchers disagree on whether the man was executed or sacrificed. Body position and the fact that the eyes and mouth of the disease are closed testify against execution. The last food of the Tolan man is a porridge made from cultivated and wild seeds, including barley and flax. The man last ate at least 12 hours before his death. The body is on display at the Silkeborg Museum in Denmark. Facial reconstruction by French criminologist Philippe Froch. House of Pompeii's Poor People Archaeologists have explored a house in Pompeii where they discovered a small sanctuary, Lararium, four years ago. Inside it, they managed to unearth several rooms that contained ceramic, glass and bronze utensils and other household items, the remains of furniture including a bed, a table, chest and cabinets. Apparently, representatives of not the most wealthy segments of the population lived in this house. Archaeologists continued to explore this house with a Lararium. The excavation 
additions made it possible to open four rooms in which various household items of the 1st century AD were preserved. One of the rooms studied was a bedroom that contained the remains of a bed frame and a pillow, the fabric texture of which is still discernible. By its type, the found bed turned out to be identical to those that were discovered last year in the room of slaves. Next to it was a wooden chest left open by the owners, on which beams and boards collapsed from the ceiling. Inside the chest, archaeologists found a ceramic plate made of red and glazed clay, the so-called terra sigillata, and an oil lamp depicting the transformation of Zeus into an eagle. The other room explored was a closet, or something similar. It was the only room with a northern floor and unplastered walls. In it, the researchers found a shelf with an amphora and a pile of wooden boards, which apparently were intended for various purposes, from making furniture to repairing premises. In a small corridor, archaeologists also found the remains of a two-meter wooden cabinet, which was damaged by the collapse of the ceiling. Inside, it had at least five shelves, which contained small jugs and amphoras, as well as glass plates. The director of the Pompeii Archaeological Park, Gabriel Zucktriegel, noted that the excavated house was not in the most prestigious area of the city, where the representatives of the lower and middle classes lived mainly. So in the courtyard of the studied house, there was a beautifully decorated water storage, but at the same time the rooms themselves looked very modest, which apparently reflects the lack of money for their decor. Star Map of Kither's Tomb the star map was discovered in Kither's tomb in the village of Asuka in 1998, a site dating from the late 7th to early 8th century, making it the oldest existing star map of its kind in the world. It presents 68 constellations, in which the stars are depicted with the help of golden disks. The movement of celestial objects is also represented as three concentric circles with another circle depicting the movement of the Sun. In the center is the North Star. An analysis of the digital images showed that the most likely observation sites were those located at the 34th parallel of the North latitude, including the ancient cities of Chang'an and Luoyang which were the capitals of the Chinese dynasties that ruled in the middle reaches of the Yellow River. Some scholars believe that the sightings were made several hundred years before Kither's tomb was built. This could be between 240 and 520 AD, while other scholars prefer a time period of 120 to 40 BC. The tomb consists of a small stone chamber just over a meter high, one meter wide and about two and a half meters long. The walls are oriented to the four cardinal directions and the drawings on them depict the black tortoise of the north, the azure dragon of the east, the red bird of the south and the white tiger of the west. These images are accompanied by additional zodiac images consisting of human figures with animal heads. The chamber was large enough to bury one person. This man was buried in a lacquered coffin that had been smashed during a tomb robbery, and the pieces were scattered across the floor. The chamber also contains grave goods and fragments of human bones. Artifacts found at the site include gold fittings and parts of a decorated sword. The evidence suggests a middle-aged adult male, probably of aristocratic origin. The discovery of the star chart is currently the subject of much controversy, prompting further discussions about the history of astronomical technology in Japan. Some suggest that such cards were often used for rituals and divination. Who nevertheless created this mysterious artifact in such ancient times remains a mystery. And to learn more about new mysteries of archaeologists, subscribe to the channel and click on the bell. Leave your kind comments which I will definitely read and answer. Thanks for your views. Bye everyone!